And done. Finally made my character for your 10th level game. Oh, nice. What did you decide to go with? I got a bard, cleric, druid, warlock, sorcerer. Five characters, Ted? I mean, I don't think the game was going to be that lethal. No, no. It's two levels in each. You know, there's just so many really great low-level abilities. I just couldn't decide, so I took them all. Hey, Ted, I think it's time to discuss the best class features for multi-classing in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Let's get, get into those level dips. Welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds, I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. If you want more d d in your YouTube feed, make sure you cherry-pick that subscribe button. And if you want to level up your game with Nerdarchy, make sure you select that notification bell. Hey, before we jump into the video, did you know YouTube isn't the only place to stay in touch with Nerdarchy and our nerdy content? We have a newsletter down in the description you can sign up for. Not only that, you'll get a one-time coupon code to get some free stuff over on nerdarchy.com. All right, so we're talking about, you know, cherry picking or multi-class level dipping, you know, low-level abilities that are just too good to pass up. Yeah, so essentially we're going to be looking at levels one and two. Uh, for many character classes, this doesn't even get into the subclasses of them. There's a couple where it does, you know, I believe, what do we got? We have uh, our, dru our cleric, our druid, our wizard, our warlock, and sorcerer. Uh, but, you know, along with all of these, you know, a number of classes, when you multi-class, are going to give you spellcasting, as well as, you know, weapon and armor proficiencies. Like, these are, these are the obvious things. And we're not even going to go heavily into them. Uh, so, like, if these are the things you're going for, you know, feel free to get into it. But we're talking about the specific class and, and subclass abilities that are just, you know, really, really awesome, really worthwhile. And also, we're going to talk about more generic abilities, not like, oh, I'm going for this very, very super specific build and do this one unique thing right. that's very niche. So we're going to go down the classes, you know, in alphabetical order and talk about all of the things that we think are, you know, generically good that, you know, you, you can be able to, to pick and grab as, you know, those quick level dips. All right, we can start with the, uh, the newest of the character classes, the Artificers. Nothing. There's nothing really there that is generic enough to, to warrant a dip in this class unless you want a serious inv investment in taking artificer right artificer is a great a great class you know i love it i'm actually currently playing one really powerful but for you know for this video we didn't feel there was anything you know stellar that stood out so next up is going to be barbarian what are we looking at there barbarian actually offers a couple things you know at the end of his first two levels that are super useful uh unarmored defense if you're playing anything that isn't getting to get armor proficiencies or where being wearing armor is useful and rage there those are the first level abilities so both of them can be super useful to splash into a character. You know, th those are really great, you know, if you're looking to go for a more mar martial character, or as you said, you know, a character who doesn't get access to armor. But we're also going to get Danger Sense and Reckless Attack. But both are, you know, are pretty awesome, pretty useful. Yeah, I mean, Danger Sense, getting advantage on Dexterity saving throw is nice. Reckless Attack, anytime you feel like you need advantage on an attack uh reckless attack is going to give it to you at a cost but you know yeah. you can get it it's awesome for rogues you know awesome for rogues and you know going really well if you are happen to be raging besides to be able to have that damage to begin with all right next up is bard bard's a great one to dip into at first level you're going to get bardic inspiration uh you know as as well as you're going to get at second level you're going to get jack of all trades and song of rest all three of these are really great Really useful if you're already making a, you know, support character or just general skill-based character. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jack of All Trades, essentially, you get half your proficiency modifier to anything you try. And that's an ability check uh, or a skill, including initiative. So very nice. Song of Rest. Anytime you take a rest, uh, just adding an extra D6 to everyone's healing that it spends hit dice. Perfect. So next up, we're looking at Cleric. And because Cleric has access to their Divine Domains right at first level, there is a lot of stuff that's here. We're going to pick out some of our favorites that we think are, are useful. You know, some things might be good low level that kind of fall off. Like Forge Domain, really great. But once you start getting everyone equipped with magical armor and magical weapons, winds up being not, not useful at all. Another great one is Knowledge, and I happen to, you know, play, play this one for, for quite some time. Uh, this is going to wind up giving you access to two skills with expertise, History and Arcana. 
if you don't happen to have a spellcaster in the party for arcane or someone with the arcana skill, a single level in, in cleric is going to give you that skill with expertise. It is like super stupid helpful how quickly that can turn, you know, the knowledge game, uh, you know, around at that point. You also get a couple languages too. So you get, you're getting a couple things from there from knowledge. I really like the order domain. Order is going to give you proficiencies in heavy armor, and then you also get a skill proficiency from a small list you get to choose. I believe it's uh, persuasion or intimidation, but you know, it gets to, you know, so you're gonna get the little bump there. That's not all, you're also gonna get voice of authority. This is awesome because when you cast a spell on an ally, doesn't have to be a cleric spell, just a spell, they can then use their reaction to attack somebody you choose. So this is great if you have a rogue in the party or someone that hits specifically hard and you're like, hey, here, here's a buff. Now smack <laughs> that guy. <laughs> a buff, a heal, all of it works. And since you're a cleric, you're going to get those things. So another great one is the war domain. You're going to get proficiencies. You're going to get heavy armor proficiency as well as uh, martial weapons. So if you have a character that isn't particularly martial, you can make them martial with a splash from war domain, but that's not all. They also get the war priest ability. And what the war priest ability does for you is you can get make another attack as a bonus action a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, but minimum of one. Now, those were just the first level of cleric abilities that give you a nice bump. At second level, there's a couple worth calling out as well. And these usually rely on your channel divinity, which means it's, you know, you're going to get to use it a couple times per short rest. So the grave domain channel divinity is path to the grave. And this is you're going to grant something uh, vulnerability to the next damage type. Uh, so this is really, really good if you can set this up to go like right before the wizard casts a spell or the rogue makes a sneak attack. You, you, this, this has been used to, to great uh, results in, in games. Absolutely. I mean, the first level ability they get, not worth mentioning for what we're talking about, but that second level ability is worth the two level dip because you're basically getting to crit something whenever you want to. And with the potential of putting a crit on top of that is super, super helpful in any game. It can be totally clutch. It's amazing. We've seen it used in our own games. Uh, the other one I would also mention is War Again. Two levels of War is great. That Guided Strike ability for the War Domain is amazing. amazing. A plus 10 to hit is super awesome. You know, and if you're already going with, like I say, a sniper type character, you know, you could be like, all right, well, I'm going to do this, and this is going to then push me. Well, I can take a minus five to get a plus 10 to damage. Well, you know, I didn't hit, so I really wanted to hit here. Whoop! Look at that, I did. Or, you know, say you got someone that has that Grave Domain ability in the party. Uh, the Rogue is up to attack next. And, you know, the War Priest wants to make sure they really, really hit. Plus 10 is going to get them there, more than likely. You know, and so that, that's, you know, stacking a couple different features on top of each other. But it all works, and, you know, team power for the win, right? <laughs> so next up, we have the Druid. The Druid, first level ability, is not super impressed with. But at second level, the Druid starts to shine. You know, the, the generic class ability of Wild Shape is great. Adds a lot of versatility, twice per short rest. Adds extra hit points that you can draw upon, but also there's a tons of utility you can get out of that feature as well. Absolutely, it's going to be great for the exploration pillar. It's going to be great, great to be able to you know circumnavigate a, a number of different you know uh, situations and problems that you know you know we it'd be too numerous for us to list here. So at second level, we get to choose a circle, and circle of spores is really great. You're going to get chill touch as a as a uh, cantrip for free, so you just have it. Now, is that worth dipping for in itself? Probably not. Hell of Spores, though, is pretty cool. You can just do necrotic damage as a reaction to anyone who starts their turn near you. So every round, just, hey, I'm just going to do extra damage. It's kind of cool. Also, uh, as a Circle of Spores, you're also going to get another ability called Symbiotic Entity, and it's just another way to use your Wild Shape. You do it, you're going to get eight temporary hit points because we're only a, sec a level two druid. Okay, it's going to double our Hallow of Spores damage from a die 4 to 2 die 4, but then also our weapon attacks will deal an additional die 6 poison damage. So I feel like there's some really cool ways you could probably combine this with the martial character. Yeah, it sounds like some, some very fun stuff, but we, you know, we don't want to overshadow how awesome the Moon Druid is. You know, there's lot, lots of people say that it's the, it's the best, it's the, you know, the most fun. 
because you know their wild shape is going to be able to increase the CR of the creature or the beast that you can turn into. Super useful. It gives you a lot more options, a lot more power. But that's not all. They've got the ability to sacrifice a spell as a bonus action to heal themselves, so they can stay in their form and and use their spell slots to heal. So really great, really thematic, really useful. Yeah, you're going to get that die 8 per spell level. And also, you can now Wild Shape as a bonus action instead of an action. So next up, we're looking at Fighter. And, you know, Fighter is, in my opinion, one of the best classes, uh, you know, for going into level dips. We've already said quite a lot. You know, Fighter is going to get you a Fighting Style and Second Wind. And then once you get to second level, I mean, come on, Action Surge. I mean, how can you go wrong there? I mean, it's also it's an awesome thing to add to a spellcaster. It is the only way to cast two spells in the same round that are you know have spell slots uh, of first and higher. So you can go, never go wrong with that. There's nothing more fun than throwing two fireballs in the same round. And he's done it. So, <laughs> so next up we have monk at first level. You're going to get on armor, arm, armor defense. We discussed that with barbarian. Why that's cool. And you're also going to get Martial Arts, which has a bunch of different features, and it also means you are never unarmed. Second level, we get access to Key. We can use that to do different things with our bonus action, which is super nice. And also, we're going to get Unarmored Movement, which is just going to make us faster. So, all really useful. Uh, again, something really great for, you know, those those martial-based characters. Or maybe you just want to, you know, add a little bit of spice into one of your spellcasters. Uh, but all in all, those are some fantastic abilities. You know, next up, we're looking at Paladin. We're not really getting anything, you know, useful at, at first level. But once we get to second level, we're going to get our access to our fighting style. And we're also going to get Divine Smite. Uh, you know, not super great if this is the only spellcasting class you're taking, but, you know, if you happen to be, you know, pseudo martial and you're looking at, like, Cleric or Warlock, you know, you can be, that you know, adding these smites onto anything, because it doesn't have to be a Paladin spell slot that you sacrifice. You just need spell slots, so no matter where you get them, it doesn't matter, so adding, you know, adding that smite in is nice. Heck, even playing a fighter that's an Eldritch Knight and taking two levels of Paladin will greatly increase what you can do. Absolutely. So we got Ranger up next. Ranger really doesn't offer anything to dip. I feel like if you want to play a Ranger and get stuff out of that, you got to commit to being a Ranger. You know, you're, you are going to get that, that fighting style at a, at a low level, but, you know... There's the, better ways of getting it. There are better ways to getting it if you're looking to, to go martial. You know, uh, next up is going to be Rogue. And, you know, Rogue starts off right away with getting access to that sneak attack. You know, really useful, but it doesn't end there. You're also going to get expertise, you know, so sneak attack expertise, both the first level, you know, it's really close for me. Uh, what is the most dippable class between fighter and rogue? I would have to agree with that. I, I feel that, you know, those are the strongest characters or strongest character classes to, to really dive into. But just like with fighter, it doesn't stop at first level. Second level, they're going to get cunning action. And I have seen cunning action used in so many different ways to so much great story and regalia. Uh, that, you know, that it's, while it's not as quite good as Action Surge, it is still pretty darn powerful. I might argue it's better than Action Surge. You can use it every single round as long as you have a bonus action. You can hide, disengage, or move. So, you know, they're going to offer you a lot of options often uh, over and over again. It's not as powerful as Action Surge, but it may be more useful and far more versatile. I would agree with you there. So next up, we're looking at the Sorcerer, and this one we're going to specifically look at at Shadow, uh, because this one is super useful, you know, with, with their advantages that they're going to be able to do. So they're going to get two abilities. They're going to get Eyes of the Dark, which is going to give you dark vision out to 120 feet. Uh, this is, you know, more powerful than any other, you know, uh, racial uh, dark vision. And they're also going to get Strength of the Grave, which is allows you to make a con save that when you're dropped to zero, you can be dropped to one instead. So, you know, really useful for I don't want to die right now. Yeah, it, it essentially turns you into a zombie. Crits of radiant damage still will drop you, but other than that, you still have a chance of staying up. So I feel like the combination of these two abilities are really cool. One makes you more durable. The other one is utility if you don't you know, happen to have dark vision and you, for whatever reason you really want it. And you want to see really, really far. <laughs> So for Sorcerer, for second level, we've got nothing, just one level and you're good. We're like at first level, we've got some options here. One of the things, you pick your patron at first level. So that's what we're going to specifically look at. A couple of the patrons, Great Old One, for instance. 
you know, this one's going to give you access to telepathy. You can only really talk to one, one person at a time, but telepathy, man. I mean, this is usually like, you know, a high level ability and to just be able to like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, talk mind to mind right now. Totally silent. No, no way for someone to accidentally overhear you. Really great. Yeah. Awakened mind. Great ability. It's super useful for kind of anyone, you know, for like a utility ability. Even more so if you happen to be playing a druid who wild shapes a lot because you can't talk when you're in an animal form, but you can telepathy while you're in animal form. Absolutely. You know, great, great for, you know, you know, anyone trying to be stealthy, anyone who's, as you said, you know, shape changing, uh, you know, and I'm certain that there's a load of other awesome, you know, things that, you know, are, ex you know, very specific examples of why this is going to be good. All right, so we're also going to look at the Hexblade. You're going to get Hexblades Cursed and Hex Warrior. Uh, these are some, you know, re really good abilities if, you know, you're, you're wind up looking to, to be that, you know, that martial caster. So it's going to allow you, you know, an improved crit, bonus to damage, and the ability to heal if you drop your enemy. Hex Warrior, also great. You're going to get proficiencies with shields and light and medium armor. But in addition to those armor proficiencies, you're also going to get martial weapons. And then after a long rest, you can... Pick a specific weapon as long as it does not have the two-handed property. And now you can beat people with your face instead of your strength or dex. Because <laughs> you can use your charisma score modifier instead of those other ones. So that's super helpful. If you're playing any kind of charisma caster or charisma-based character, and you would rather beat people with your face than the strength of your arm, you could totally do that. I, I love your, your clarifier of beat them with your face. <laughs> Just so people know. Now, second level for Warlock, it doesn't matter what you picked for first level, but second level, you get access to invocations, and there are so many different invocations that we couldn't, we're not going to go through all of them here. But knowing that, you know, cherry picking two levels of Warlock just for that is a good call. We have a couple of them that we'll call out. So, Beguiling Influence, that's going to give you access to two different skills. Eldritch Sight's going to allow you to cast Detect Magic at will, and Mask of Many Faces being able to cast. And Mask of Many Faces, being able to cast Disguise Self at will, again, you know, these are just some great abilities and, and many different ways that these are going to be useful in the game. Then we have last but not least, and that is our wizard. And at first level wizard, you know, we really don't get anything worth mentioning. Uh, cool specific things, but not gen general. But it's when we get to second level and we look at some of the traditions that there are some things that are going to be really useful to everybody. Uh, specifically, it's becoming a divination or taking diviner. You know, portent, you're going to get two of them right off the bat. So having those two numbers that you can interchange whenever you want is really nice. Yeah, it's really good whether you use it on yourself uh, or whether you use it for someone else. You know, the, those numbers that just have in the, you know, in your back pocket every day really useful but you know something else you can put in your pocket is that transmuter stone so another thing you might be able to pull out of your pocket is arcane deflection from the war wizard or war magic you know being able to get you know a, a plus two to your ac uh or a plus four to saving throws you know using your reaction pretty nice the, the only downside is you can't cast an actual spell only a cantrip the following you know that that round but that being said if we're only dipping we might not even have that many spells to cast anyway <laughs> Uh, you know, so, you know, a lot of useful things that you can look at there. And uh, again, with all of these things, when you're, when you're looking at, you know, spell casting, you know, they're just too numerous. The different spells that you would get, you know, are all going to offer, you know, unique and specific, you know, build options for whatever you started with to begin with. But we felt these were some really great examples of things that are going to be useful for a lot of different types of characters. And in case you hadn't really thought about it before, these are things that you might want to pick if you're going to consider multiclassing. If you enjoyed this multi-class discussion, you might enjoy this one up here. D&D feats, multi-classing without multi-classing. And if you enjoyed this discussion, you might want to join the discussion over on our Nerdarchy Discord. Another place you might be able to find us for this discussion is going to be our patron-only Discord channel. But that's not all. We do 5e content for DMs and players alike. Monthly giveaways, our patrons are automatically entered in, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.